Welcome to Bader International's Classic Online Motorcycle Sales. Today we're going to be working on Chapter 8 of the restoration of the 1957 Harley-Davidson XL Sportster. And in this chapter we're going to be working on frame repair and getting the, uh, the frames ready for, for paint. So have a look. Moving on to frame repair. This frame here had some braze repair done under the bottom of the uh, frame tube. And we looked it over and it's structurally sound, so we're just going to go ahead and leave it. It's not worth uh, replacing the tubes because, again, I think we'd do more damage than good. And also did some work to the uh, lower um, kickstand spring mount. And then we're going to go ahead and do some welding up on some of the holes. Now this frame here, this is very typical. The If you sight down this line here, you'll see that the left foot peg is actually bent back. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up right in here with my torch and uh, as you can see, and then we're going to go ahead and put a cheater on this and then bend it forward to uh, get it in line. So again, this is some of the stuff that you have to double check to make sure that you get everything right before you go ahead and do the paintwork. And again, all these little tape marks up here here, these, all these holes have to go. So, um, and again, we worked on the kickstand hole here for the spring. That's a very typical um, area to have damage. So we went ahead and fixed that, made it structurally sound, and looks okay. So we're going to go ahead and get this uh, heated up and bent forward. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. Again, being that I'm a one-man operation here, some of my uh, video production is quite uh, limited, so you'll have to bear with me on what you see and what you don't see. Okay, we're going to be doing this one-handed, being that I'm going to be shooting this as I go. And you want to get an even burn all the way around the, uh, the place that needs to be bent. That way you make sure you don't do any cracking. To where you're going to have to uh, weld an area up. You don't want to have to do that, especially on this cast stuff. You want to heat it up until it's cherry red, and then we'll put a cheater bar on it, and we'll get it in line. And again, you can see where it's kicked back, probably uh, probably five degrees, I'm guessing. Looks like it's starting to turn color. This is a pretty thick casting, so you want to make sure that you get it uh, warmed up all the way to the core of the metal. And once I do get it cherry red, I'm going to have to uh, Put the phone down or my my camera down so I could turn my torch off and to get my cheater bar on it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, she's starting to glow. And just hold on one moment. Okay, as you can see, I got my cheater bar secured, and I'm going to continue to heat it up, and I'm just going to lean into my bar and see if I can get it straightened. Let's take a look. Uh, we still got a few degrees to go. Put my bar back on. 
a little bit more heat to it. If you've never tried doing this one-handed, okay, let's lean into it. Okay, I saw a movement there, so let's take a look. I'd say we're pretty bang on. So I'm happy with that. And it's pretty much straight up and down, so I don't need to change that. So we'll go ahead and let that cool down, but again, a successful uh, repair. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my torch off before I burn the house down. Okay, just a recap on this. I think we are in very good alignment. And I'm very happy with that repair. And one of the other things that I have here that I need to repair on the swing arm is you see somebody's welded a bolt to this casting right here. And if you look back here, it looks like there looks like might even be a, a drill uh, tip that got broken off in here. So long story short, we'll have to fix this one up. The best way to approach this repair is to go ahead and hacksaw the uh, actual bolt off and then see if we can expose the back side of this drill bit. And if we can, punch it back through this way uh, to blow it out of the hole. And then we can go ahead and weld that up and make the repair. So I'm going to go ahead and hacksaw this, uh, this bolt off now and see what we have after the fact. Okay, I went ahead and I cut off the uh, little bolt out of there. And I took the grinder and ground it down to the shape that it should be. And there is the hole that is exposing the back side of that drill bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take a punch and try punching it through this way to see if we can knock that drill bit out. If not, then I'll reverse it and try it in the other direction. Okay, there you have it. This is the end of the drill that was stuck in the casting piece there. I went ahead and punched it out. And here was the bolt that was actually welded to the uh, to the head here so anyhow uh, we got that grounded down it's basically in the the proper shape and the reason I know it's the proper shape is I have this other swing arm sitting right here and it's basically telling me it's the proper shape so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clean this up here I'll I'll drill out all the rust that's in this hole here and then I'm just going to come in and I think I'm just going to braise this close because again this is nothing structural it's just to fill it so we can uh, shape it and paint it so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then fall back on the two frames uh, that I've set aside and let that one cool. So we'll get this knocked out and uh, get it all brazed up and it'll be just as good as new. Well, there you have it. That's one swing arm repair. After I do a little bit of a grind on that, uh, clean it up a little bit, uh, she will be ready for paint and assembly. Okay, next step in the process, we've got the holes welded up, and the reason I use brass up here is because you really don't want to grind this down, and brass, depending on how you burn it, will leave a little bit of a, what can I say, a pock mark, and it sort of lines up quite nicely with the uh, casting marks uh, on, the, on the steering head itself, so brass is very good for this. Um, I went ahead and used uh, a steel rod here, and I've got it all ground down. And like I mentioned, I've got the, the uh, foot peg mount repaired on this one. Over here, again, a little brass repair. I used brass back here, and I ground it down nicely. And made that ready for paint. So it's all good. And I'm going to go ahead and run through, uh, going through all the holes, tapping everything out. And it's best to use a pick and dig around in those holes first and get out all the dirt because there's definitely going to be dirt back down in those holes after 62 years of, of um, running around in the, uh, in the world. So anyhow, um, check all your threads, tap everything, you tap everything out, and, um, and then go ahead and put some tape in those holes when you go to paint it. That way you're not uh, having to chase them again. So we'll continue on doing this on both of these frames and get them, uh, get them dialed in and ready for paint. Well, I just wanted to correct a what can I say, a bit of a faux pas, because I didn't catch the fact that the upper triple tree, one of them, did not have the outer tabs for the 
key switch uh, bracket. So you may have seen that and commented, well, hey, you know, he's going to have a problem there. So anyhow, you can see what I've been doing. I went ahead and uh, made some tabs, brazed it on the uh, lower triple tree, and I have to go ahead and do the same for the rear. And also for the upper triple tree, I went ahead and uh, made some tabs and welded them on, and it's already primered and ready for paint. But I went ahead and I measured exactly uh, the size to the, each of the um, of each of the triple trees, and they're they're bang on as far as the holes are concerned. So when you do go to put the key switches in, um, they'll all line up for the upper um, upper um, fork tin. So anyhow, um, I did catch that. Shame on me, but uh, again, uh, I'm uh, not perfect, but I do catch most of my mistakes. So like I mentioned, I just have to go ahead and weld on the back ones like that around here. And that'll uh, get this lower triple tree all done. And I do have the upper one all corrected now. So I uh, just wanted to make mention of that. Now that we have the little tabs made for the rear brackets on the lower triple tree, as you can see, I've got them clamped in position. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a quick braze on that. And then I'll go ahead and remove the, the tube and the clamps and everything, and I'll go ahead and braze it on the underside, and then we'll go ahead and clean it up. And that should be pretty much it for this uh, lower triple tree, and it'll be as good as new. Well, thanks for watching this segment, and hopefully it's been educational as well as enjoyable. And make sure you go to our website at www.batorinternational.com and hit the subscribe button there. Also, make sure you hit the like button on our YouTube channel, and you can also subscribe to this channel as well. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.